Gen 1 MR2. Anyway, man, you don't see many of these Gen 1's uh, MR2s anymore. Well, it looks like someone's been through here and got quite a bit of the parts for it, but leave the engine now, took the engine too. Wow. Wonder how clean this was when it arrived. I picked this one pretty darn clean. There's the 88 MR2. Pretty cool. Ooh, look what I found while I'm walking around. So this is a Gen 2 MR2, uh, 93. Uh, ooh, with the T-top, my favorite. Love the T-top, man. This one has been stripped pretty clean. Uh, there is really not much left on this one. But another red MR2. So this is a Gen 2. The other one I saw the other day was a, a Gen 1 MR, MR2. Man, I, I might be getting the itch to uh, get one of these as a project. Um, but they don't come up very often at the junkyard. So I don't know how parts availability is. I know that Sarah and Tuned did a, uh, did a Toyota MR2 Gen 2 that, uh, that she worked on. And I know that she bought a lot of JDM parts. Uh, so... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, but anyway, cool find at another another scrapyard. All right, so after spotting that Gen 1 MR2 in the junkyard a, a few weeks ago, I was, uh, was already starting to maybe think about um, looking at a project car. Uh, and then, of course, fast forward to uh, the following weekend, I, I see a Gen 2 MR2 uh, at the junkyard while I was trying to help somebody pull some sob parts, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll cover that struggle in another video. Um, all I know right now, man, is uh, the want is strong. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about MR2s, but after seeing those two and, and watching uh, some some reruns of uh, Sarah and Toon's uh, project car, man, the, the want is definitely strong. So uh, so anyway, now now I'm looking for for an MR2 project, and here's one. It's a 1991 uh, MR2 Gen 2. Uh, it says it's got 150,000 miles and it's advertised for advertised for 7,000. Looks fairly decent except for the uh, paint on the hood and rear bumper are really faded. Uh, the interior looks pretty clean, but parts of the dash look like uh, they're warped from maybe being parked outside in the sun too long. Uh, seller says he's got the original radio, uh, which is what I would put back in if, if I were to buy this. Uh, no pictures of the engine, uh, and the seller says it could use a tune-up, not sure what that really means, uh, and then there's no check engine light. So, uh, you know, I'm price-wise, I think it's it's up it's up a little high. Um, there was a really nice black-on-black -black, uh, MR2 1991 uh, daily driver that sold on Bring a Trailer for 7300 um, and if restored, they seem to sell, you know, around the, the mid twenties. Uh, so I think if the, if the seller drops his price a bit, I, I might be a buyer on this one. Um, but I don't know about you. I, I personally, I, I prefer the look of the gen one MR2 better. That's the first, uh, the first one I found in the junkyard. Um, and so then I looked, was looking for an MR2 gen one. I found this listing. Uh, but they want a really pretty penny for it. Um, it's an 88 MR2, so it's identical to the one I found in the yard. Obviously, this one's a lot nicer. Um, and Actually, I'm wondering how many parts from that junkyard MR2 ended up uh, on this one. They're only located about 100 miles from each other, so I don't know if he picked some, some trim pieces um, f from that junkyard MR2 and put it on his, but... Anyway, from, from the pictures, I can't really see anything wrong with this car. Uh, it looks like it's basically a garage queen. Paint looks great, and that T-top. Man, ha have I mentioned how many times I, I, I love the T-top? Um, anyway, the, the interior is pristine. Uh, well, maybe with the exception of the steering wheel, but the rest of the car is wow.
just simply wow. But at, but at 14,000, it better be a wow. Um, it, just looking at the prices, I think the Gen 1 seems to bring a, a little bit stronger uh, stronger dollar than the Gen 2. Uh, Haggerty has these uh, valued, you know, just just around 20,000, and, and bring a trailer seems to be hovering around that price too. Uh, but hey, since this is Kintsugi Moto, uh, we tend to resist buying Garage Queens, so I might have to pass on that one, as, as nice as it might be. Uh, so I, I did some more searching, and I found another Gen 1, and this one's only listed for 8,000, and it says, says it's been stored for 15 years, so ran when parked. Definitely sounds more like my kind of car. Uh, body looks a little rough in spots, uh, and judging by all the pictures of the extra boost gauges and the fuel mixture gauges and all the other non-stock items uh, this car might have had some uh, go faster bits put in um, and then probably didn't pass smog probably why it got parked but and here's the but this one's supercharged so I did a little more digging around uh, and only 7885 supercharged MR2s were made for the 88 model year uh, this one is a four-speed automatic, uh, so it doesn't come from the factory with a millennial theft device, anti-theft device. Uh, but since this might be a motor out refresh, uh, the transmission is going to be right there. And um, if I can find the parts, it might be the opportune time to swap in a manual. Uh, so uh, looking back at Haggerty, uh, the auto transmission decreases the value of a supercharged MR2 by about 20%. Uh, so that drops the premium of a supercharger over um, uh, over the stock um, MR2 to be only about um, 15%. But if we can convert this into a manual, then the potential uh, value really increases and the value of a three pedal with the supercharger is somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 to 45 percent over a base uh, MR2. Anyway, I'll link all of the uh, listings below and uh, curious to see uh, which one you guys prefer, Gen 1 or Gen 2, and whether you think a manual swap uh, would be worth doing if you've, uh, if anyone's done it before, how long it took you, and any pitfalls to look out for. Anyway, thanks for watching.